I think we got everybody on target and hitting stuff, which is always a good thing to start off with, right? As you mentioned before, that first kind of rep of the day, that breaking the ice drill, that is the, uh, the last time where speed will not be a, an element that we do throughout the rest of the day. Um, no matter what kind of shooting you're doing, if it's anything that, that matters, anything that's practical in that kind of a sense, like speed is usually a thing. In the real world, bad guys get to go first. Um, only way we can hope to, uh, to come out on top is to kind of overcome that power curve through, yes, tactics, but also speed and surprise and violence of action, all, all that good stuff, right? So we're gonna start picking up the pace a little bit. A um, couple things we're gonna go through really quickly on, on a fundamental standpoint, just to make sure everyone got some of these key things and, and really zone in on some things that are gonna make a big difference as we start adding speed to what, what it is that we're doing. Um, looked like everybody was doing a great job, had a, you know, kind of a great stance platform behind the job, uh, behind the gun, getting nice and square to the target. However, if we square our feet to the target, right? If I get, have my feet equidistant from the target, if you will, what we call a, an isosceles stance, because I have a you know, triangle to the target, basically. What we see a lot as I start doing these faster strings of fire is that as I go through my string, one, two, three, four, five, six, I end up getting kind of rocked back on my heels as I go through that string. Yes, we're shooting nine millimeter, the recoil is not all that. Um, but at the same time, the faster we go, the more that's gonna start causing a shift in our weight. The way I can neutralize a lot of that is by dropping my strong side foot back a little bit, right? Just a reminder to everybody to get a nice athletic stance. It's gonna help me shift my weight and be a lot stronger and more stable with that front to back recoil, okay? So as I do this, hopefully, the goal, I can keep my hips, my shoulders, everything still square to the target, equal pressure behind the gun. Just give me that front and back stability with this stance. Uh, a couple of reminders on grip for everybody. Obviously, Key number one is I want to be as high on this gun with both hands as I possibly can. Uh, Ho Hollywood tells us, right, that recoil is kind of an invisible force out here on the end of my muzzle that's pointing, pushing my gun up like that every time I shoot, uh, shoot the gun. We know that's not really the case. Recoil is in this barrel, and much like a rocket booster, right, when, the, when that combustion happens, the, the recoil impulse is traveling straight to the rear against the closed end of that closed cylinder. So if I could get square behind the slide, you know, with my grip, something like this, I would do that. And the gun wouldn't go up at all. It would just recoil straight back into my hands every single time. Of course, I can't do that. I have to leave room for this slide to cycle while I'm shooting, which is why I have to grab grip below the bore, right? However, I know if I grip down here, it's going to jump a lot more. If I can get up nice and high on the gun, this is going to help it recoil back into my hands. As far as my left hand goes, obviously I want to fill as much of this empty plastic as I possibly can with this left hand. With my left hand, I can squeeze the gun basically as hard as I can without introducing some kind of a tremor into it, but I'm just gonna crush the gun with this left hand as much contact with the gun as I can and as high with the gun as I can. If I got a bigger gun and I can get all my hand on the gun but I'm squeezing down here, that's not gonna do nearly as much for me as if I can get this grip up nice and high on the gun and really, really squeeze in as close to that bore axis where the recoil is happening as I possibly can. Uh, that's something else I'll mention to you is, 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 the, is the wrist angle on the gun. Again, different people have different schools of thought on this. I'm telling you you have to do it this way. This is what works well for me, okay? If I grip this gun with what I consider to be a neutral wrist angle, right, as if I was throwing a punch, right, where my, my fist is kind of square to my forearm, the only thing that's keeping this thing square as the gun goes off is equal muscle tension on the top and bottom of this forearm. It's what's keeping it square problem with that is when the gun goes off it's going to add additional forces up and that's going to cause my wrist to break when when the shot fires so when I when I grip the gun like this what you'll see a lot of times is as I shoot the gun it's going to break in my wrist kind of like so okay to neutralize that what I find works really well for me is instead of dripping it gripping it with a neutral angle is to break this wrist over as far as I can driving forward into the gun to where I'm basically locking that wrist out when I do this, the gun can no longer break my wrist because I have it locked all the way forward, and it's going to encourage the recoil to be observed here in my, in my elbows and in my shoulders, keeping the gun a lot flatter on target. It's still going to move. It's going to go somewhere, right? <laughs> We're not going to be no one's strong enough, powerful enough, fast enough to completely kill 100% of the recoil you're, you're having in your gun. But if I can keep my sights on target, it's going to allow me to have my follow-up shots a lot faster because I can keep track of those sights a lot easier, absorbing the recoil here versus letting it break my wrist every shot. 
So getting up nice and high on the gun, driving the wrist forward. I'll know I'm doing this correctly when I'm gripping the gun. If I grip it neutral, when I open these fingers, you notice my fingers are pointing straight forward. I have that neutral grip on the gun. If I drive this forward, when I open my fingers, they'll be pointing kind of at a 45 degree angle down to the ground. Okay, that's kind of a good indicator if I'm doing this, doing this correctly with my grip on the gun. Other thing we're going to talk about is trigger control a little bit. So when we're working on just accuracy, all we really care about is how we pull the trigger. Okay, because that's what that's what impacts our accuracy. That's what we worked on in the first block. So for most of us, everyone's trigger is a little bit different. But when I have this trigger here, I got all this kind of squishy stuff here in the beginning of my trigger pull. We call that pre-travel. Okay, this is just wasted time. Okay, there is no, I'm not accomplishing anything right now. So for the most part, every single shot that I shoot, I want to eliminate that, be on the wall, and shoot from the wall. Why is that important? Well, no, no matter how good of a shooter I am, when I'm doing this kind of motion right here, I'm moving the gun to some degree or another, right? And so if I start all the way out and I snatch that trigger all the way through, chances are my accuracy is going to be really, really poor. Whereas if I eliminate all that motion and then just add pressure, add pressure, add pressure, add pressure, break, I can break the shot without actually having to move my trigger finger at all, imparting any movement to the gun. So when I find that wall and squeeze from there, my shot's going to be a lot more accurate. Now, what happens after that, right? After I fire that shot, after my slide cycles, when I let that trigger back out, I'm going to hear that click, and then, and then my trigger's reset now, right? I don't have to go any farther than that. I don't have to come all the way off the trigger and all the way back on. I just have to reset it essentially to where that click is and I'm ready to shoot that gun again. Now, what a lot of people do naturally and some of you have even been taught to do over the years depending on your background is kind of what we call click banging, okay? So the idea here is that I pull the, uh, the trigger, pin it to the rear, gun cycles, and I kind of let it out nice and slowly and I find that reset and then I shoot once I find that click, okay? What I'm going to present to you here, that's the exact opposite of what we need to be doing in our shooting. What I'm doing there essentially is once the gun goes off, I'm letting it out slowly, finding that reset, and then yanking the trigger to the rear after I hear that click. Letting the trigger out slowly has no impact on my accuracy, right? Because after I let it out slowly, I can stop, I can find my wall again, and I can squeeze. Letting it out, my, how fast does it reset has no impact on accuracy. Again, it's just wasted time. So as you start picking up speed and trying to be accurate at speed, I want to do everything, always, at 100% speed, except for sometimes pulling the trigger. <laughs> now we're going to pull the trigger at 100% speed at some point too. But when I'm going for higher levels of accuracy because of distance, because of the size of my target, because of whatever the case may be, and I want to increase that accuracy, my order of operations is, as the gun goes bang, it's going to be off on. Find that wall and squeeze. Bang off on and squeeze. Bang off on and squeeze. As soon as the gun's going off, I'm getting back on off, off, off on that trigger, finding that wall and squeezing. Okay, let me do a quick live fire demo. So I know I'm resetting my trigger. What I want to do is not pin the trigger to the rear and let it out so they can hear that click. What I want to do is literally be resetting the trigger while the gun's recoiling. Bang off on squeeze bang off on so if i do that correctly you won't hear the click at all because as soon as the gun goes off i'm getting back off on on that trigger while the gun's actually recoiling that would look something like this right so i'm not you're not hearing that click because as soon as the gun goes off i'm going off on finding that wall and squeezing again okay that's kind of the goal for what we're doing with our trigger why are we doing that again the reset process of coming off the trigger to the wall and refining that wall is a complete waste of time. If I want an accurate shot, I'm going to squeeze it gently through the wall to increase my chances of getting a nice accurate hit. If I'm not as concerned about accuracy because I'm close, big target, whatever it is, then I'll just be off on bang, off on bang, off on bang. I won't even go slowly on the trigger squeeze. But if I do need accuracy, again, it's off on squeeze right, to get through that, through that wall. Does that make sense to everybody? That's going to be the biggest emphasis for us starting off here in this next block is watching that trigger control, making sure we're getting off and on that trigger nice and quick, prepping and ready for our next shot. We're going to use these boxes down in the, in the, in the chest area for right now. It's a six inch box, so it's a pretty generous area to aim at. And then up top, we've got a three by five card, essentially. That's the exact size uh, of that box is three by five, which uh, is pretty handy. Three by five cards can be a pretty a good training tool if you're using dry fire or whatever. It's a good, good size target. Should be oriented vertically not horizontally, to uh, give us an idea of, okay, how fast can I shoot and get rounds impacting that important stuff in there that I want to be hitting, okay? 
So what we're gonna do for our first rep is we're gonna force everybody, regardless of skill level, to go nice and slow, okay? So there's gonna be 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005 type thing. When you get up on the line, your instructor's gonna give you a cadence of fire like that, some kind of a count, to give you an idea of how fast to shoot. We're gonna ask you to try to match that, okay, starting off. Um, the idea is not that we're saying, hey, when you're in our gunfight, you need to shoot on a metronome, but it's giving you an idea of how fast to shoot. For this first section, we're not asking you to shoot faster than you probably can. Everybody should be able to do this. But we're just looking for your trigger control. So I'm gonna do this first one, 1001, 1002 type speed. And then again, the main thing we're looking for guys is am I hearing those clicks or are we getting off on that trigger and squeezing? So see if we see how we do this and then our target will tell us what we need to do next, right? So if I come on target, 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, didn't hear any clicks through that string, still keeping my rounds pretty much where I want them. Our tar your target's gonna tell us how fast you're able to go. If I'm already struggling with accuracy, then I need to work on that and fix that, work those issues down. If I'm good, my target says I'm good, all my rounds are where I want them, then I can go to the next one. So that'd be something like one and two and three and four and five, which might look something like this. One and two and three and four and five. Okay, my rounds are still pretty much going where I want them. Cool, let's pick it up to the next one. One, two, three, four, five. If your target is still looking pretty good, at some point, you may hear something like, hey, I can't even count fast enough to keep up with your rate of fire, so I'm gonna go full Ricky Bobby, take off the training wheels, burn it down, let's see what you got. Now, our goal is for the training wheels to come off eventually, for it for to start finding that threshold, to find that point where the things, wheels start coming off, things start breaking down, be like, okay, that's a little bit above our ability for right now, let's back it off a little bit beyond that, and now I know where I live. But for this, we'll just say full Ricky Bobby, see what we can pull off here, be something like this. Okay, sure enough, had the couple come up high there in the lung, right? So still on paper, but it's like, all right, that's that's getting a little bit crazy. You need to back off a little bit from there. What I'm suggesting is not to say, hey, I want everybody shooting that speed and on paper by the end of the day. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, depending on where your skill level is, we need to figure out, we're gonna keep moving it up bit by bit to figure out, okay, where's your threshold? And that'll be kind of educational for you, right? So at this distance, here's the rough speed I can expect over to shoot at and get the hits that I want. Make sense?